Family Theater presents James Whitmore and Gene Raymond. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents James Whitmore in Mademoiselle from San Antoine. And now to introduce the drama, here is your host, Gene Raymond. Thank you, Charles Arlington. Family Theater exists to bring to every listener's attention the practice that must become an integral part of our daily lives if we are to find peace for ourselves, build peace for our families, and win peace for the world. Family Theater sponsors the greatest commodity civilization has provided for the soul of man, his contact with God. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. Tonight, Family Theater takes great pleasure in presenting Mademoiselle from San Antoine, starring James Whitmore as Blake. Well, I see the major leagues are beginning to worry about television again. That's nice to know, but it's certainly not news. Say, you see anything of that second night lead yet, Jimmy? Not a line. No, it should have been an hour ago. Must be some big doing. Well, what about it, news editor? I've got to give a 15-minute newscast in uh, 51 minutes. 51 minutes. Well, I'll write a couple of lines and you can ad-lib around them. Right. Use some of that stuff by the nature figures. How about that? Here's a good one, incidentally. Dateline Hollywood. Marjorie Dubois reported to be feeling much better today as she recovers from a strained back, which was sustained yesterday at Point Moro, California. The beautiful actress who was currently blah, appearing... Blah, blah, blah. Same old stuff. Don't tell me. The scene called for to hang from a cliff and some rock gave away. She was saved in the last minute by an aging Indian or a quick-thinking cameraman. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, it was wild horses and she was saved by a lighting technician. Uh, bunk. Sure, it's bunk, but it's exciting and that's what the public wants. What's this you got in your typewriter now? That what the people want? I hope so. Great, I'll use it. Over my dead body, you put this on the air and I won't be able to get a copyright. This, my boy, is the story of my life. Mademoiselle from San Antoine. The story of your life, huh? <laughs> well, the most interesting part of it, anyhow. It's a rounded incident in the last war. Well, why'd you wait this long to write it? Well, Jim, it's it's like your nature figure story. It might be true, but... But it doesn't sound true? <laughs> That's about it. That's why I'm writing it as fiction. Well, come on, let's hear it. What about your newscast? I'll use the same copy I used on the last one. Change a few adjectives. No, don't get caught on them. What about your story? Oh, yeah... You want me to read it to you? Oh, whatever you like. All right, brother, I'll tell it to you. I might think of something I forgot to put in, and it'll help me a little with the revision. Go ahead. Well, to begin with, I was a sergeant with a machine gun crew, and one day, four of us got lost. Hopelessly, miserably, and very unmilitarily lost in a fog-shrouded battlefield in France. Before that fog came in, we'd been advancing through the hedgerows, and going on that particular day had been pretty easy, because the enemy had pulled back to new positions. But with that fog, everything changed. Suddenly, we ran out of hedgerows and into a forest. And, brother, what a forest that was. You know, I bet we're the sharpest crew in the whole army. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I mean it. Look at his sides. He's been carrying a heavy tripod for three hours. You know, look a bit tired. And you two boys with that heavy ammo or rifles, trudging along, never complaining. Ah, shut up. So why should I get better when all I got to do is carry this little old measly 12-ton, 30-caliber machine gun? Hey, uh, maybe we ought to pull in and wait for the fog. Well, that's oh, about time. Uh, Great and uh, it might be a good idea to mount the gun. Oh, no. Mount the gun? Yeah. That is merely the sergeant's way of saying he ain't sure as if we're behind the enemy lines. Well, it's possible. I can't read my map without being able to see landmarks, guys. Well, we know. It's Sammy Blake. It's that thing. It digs into my shoulder. My shoulder digs into my neck. And you dig into whatever's close. Hey, no kidding, Sarge. Really might be behind the lines, huh? Now, uh, maybe we ought to hold the conversation down to a nice, polite roar. Good idea? Good idea. Oh, boy. 
And my poop. Uh, better dig in and eat before we think about sleep, I uh, Maybe behind the lines. Who can sleep? Yeah, where's my spade? This will be my 26 foxholes. I'm thinking seriously of going back and collecting all the foxholes I ever dug. Use them to store souvenirs. Somebody out there, I heard him. Relax, will you, Benny? Yeah, I suppose there was somebody out there. The four of us ain't no army, you know. Don't go ask them for no trouble. What are we supposed to do? Sit around waiting for them to start taking pot shots at us? In this fog, they can't see us any better than we can see them. Hey, there. Did you hear that? I told you there was somebody out there. Hit the dirt. Benny, slide near M1. Here, take it. Tell them to come out. Yeah, yeah, tell them there's a million of us. All right, quiet, you guys. That might be a bunch of GIs, you know. Yeah, government issue. But what government? Well, if they're our guys, they know the password. Who goes up there? Halt! Give the password! Hank, what's today's password? I don't know. What's some about bridges? I don't hear anybody answering. London Bridge, isn't it? Yeah. Give the password! I don't like this. Let's not shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get on the gun. Stay where you are, will you? I'll tell you when. They may be a bunch like us. We didn't remember the password either. Well, whoever it is, they all speak English. Any of you guys know any German? A little French, do? Yeah, try it. Tell them there's a million of us. Well, we'll tell them to come out with their hands up. Well, come, come out with their hands up. Yeah, yeah. try not to sound so scared. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, go ahead. Uh, 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 see, a vic. Let man in lair. <laughs> oh, we'll cut him to ribbons, tell him. Oh, we'll cut him to ribbons. Yes. Okay, you guys, knock it. Get ready on the gun. It might be a trick. Here, Benny, take your rifle. But don't use it unless you... Oh, brother. Will you look at that? Mm-hmm. I'm looking at it, but I don't believe it. Baby. Oh, baby, oh, baby. They'll never believe this back home. What a doll! What a doll! Yeah, don't lose your head, kid. Remember, you were the guy who wanted to fill the woods with bullets, cut them to ribbons? So I changed my mind. Uh, aren't Chris fool, mademoiselle? Hey, Will, what did I say? Uh, are you going to shoot me? A uh, lady's talking to you, Sergeant. She wants to know if you're going to shoot her. If you're not, I think she might like to put her hands down. She thinks we'd shoot her? Holy cow. Um... Bessez-vous man down, ma'am, Zell. <laughs> oh, look at her. Tremble. A kid is scared to death. Somebody ought to comfort her. Stay where you are, Benny. You want to scare her away? You are Americans, no? We are Americans, yes. Uh, has any of you guys got any rations left? For mine, I got everything. Well, give them to me. She looks hungry. Here, uh, miss, want some food? Uh, My uh, name is Janine. Thank you. I thought you were the Voshti. Why have you taken so long to get here? Oh, this is very good. K-rations? She thinks it's good. She must be hungry. Say, well, toss me that canteen. Yeah, here. You want some water, Miss uh, Janine? Water? Yeah. Water. <laughs> water. Thank you. And for after dinner, I got a cigarette for you. Oh, you are all so kind. Yeah, won't you sit down? Here, let me spread this coat for you. Oh, but it will get so dirty. Oh, it's all right. It's a sergeant's coat. <laughs> oh? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You must be very brave, so far behind the lines. What did she say? I I, I couldn't make that one out. Uh, she said we must be very brave to be so far behind the lines. Behind the lines. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very brave. I think I'm going to faint. Say, Janine, uh, how far behind the lines are we? That is a very good question. You don't know? That is very funny. Yeah. So what's so funny? Search me. I thought you were brave, but you are not brave. You are lost. Well, it's possible to be both. Uh, getting back to the question, just how far ahead of the rest of the army are we? Oh, ten, maybe twelve kilometers. Not much more. What's a, a, a kilometer? It's about a thousand meters, Stoop. Holy mackerel. So how much is a meter? About a foot and a half, maybe? Twelve thousand foots and a half. Look, we got to get back. Miss Miss Janine, could you could you tell us how to get back to the lines? Oh, monsieur, it would be very dangerous for you to try to do it tonight. Better you wait until morning. The American army will come up to meet you. They are advancing, no? 
They are advancing, yes. Both. Then tonight you spent in my father's house. Hey, did you hear that? Sleep in the house. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I don't think that oh, would be no. such a... Come on, Sarge. Gee, 12,000 foots and a half. Be safer than me and caught outside by some German patrol. Patrol? We're far enough behind the lines to be caught by the Jerry replacements going up to the front. He's right, Monsieur Sarge. Yeah, yeah, come on, Sarge. All right. All right, pick up your gear. Lead the way, lady. Hey, uh, you're taking quite a chance, aren't you, Janine? I mean, helping us? After all, this is still German territory. No, no, monsieur. It is not much chance. The Americans will be here tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. But suppose you're caught. Then we will all meet in heaven and have a big celebration. But we will not be caught, Sergeant. Yeah, say, uh, call me Blake, will you? Blake? Yeah. Blake. Blake. It is a very pretty name. It is a very lovely name. Wouldn't you say Blake is a pretty name, Benny? Will? Mm, yes, scrumptious. Hey, uh, Mamsell, uh, what do you think of Benjamin? All right, all right, close it up, close it up. Kind of a masterful name. Wait, there is an, how you say, what, water here. Yeah, she learns fast. Yeah, hold it, hold it. Oh, we got an irrigation ditch to get over. Well, we're foot slogging soldiers, walk on through. Oh, no, no, better you jump. Hmm? All right, so we jump. <laughs> Well, come on, everybody. Sure. All right, give me a hand, Jimmy. I'll help you. Here, Monsieur Blake. All right, over you come. Hey, what about me? You got a broken leg? Come on, hey. Was carrying this automatic cannon? Nuts, I'm walking through. My feet are hot anyhow. Oh, no, no, Monsieur Henri. Uh, you guys are a bunch of sisters. Hey, where'd he go? What uh, happened to him? Will, uh, Ben, come on, let's get him. Yeah, get my hand. Uh, here, here, here. Uh, catch him, man. I got a hold of his collar. Uh, All right, come on, everybody lift. Uh, uh, hey. Hey. hey, hey, will you look at that? He didn't even drop the gun. A real suit. Oh, you should have dropped it. You might have been drowned. I forgot to. Are you all right? No, no. Did he not hurt yourself? He's all right. Be as good as no. Oh. I should have told you it is deep, no? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's better that he should learn this way, mademoiselle. Now he'll never forget it. How would you like a pop in the snoot? All right, all right, come on. I'll take the gun. Ben, you carry the tripod. It, it might be lighter, Sarge, if you poured the water out of it. Very funny. It is not far to my father's house now. Just over the hill, near the town. He has been waiting for the Americans for a long time. Uh, let's go. I'm going to be tickled to death to see him in a fireplace. <laughs> Yourself by the fire. I will go and call my father and my brothers. Wait, we don't want to push you to a lot of trouble. Oh, it is Jimmy. not trouble at all. It is a privilege. Oh, that fire feels good. Boy, this is the life, huh? Man, it feels pretty good, huh? Hey, stop hogging. Will right. you move over a little? Well, will you give me a hand with the machine gun? We'll stick it over by the fire, dry some of the water out of it. We really ought to police it no, up. No, no, we'll do it after a while. Come on, move over, you guys. The American are you? Take me to them. Vive l'Amérique! It is so good to see you! We have waited so long for you, we did not think you were coming! But it is no matter. Now you are here! Papa, this is Sergeant Blake and Caporal Henri uh, and Privates Benny and William. Uh, I do not know their last name. I'm glad to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. My Easy. father, Albert de Marais. This is very nice of you, Mr. de Marais. My house is your house, my friends. Janine, go with your brother. Kill the chickens! We have a big uh, party to celebrate no, the no, victory! No. Now, Mr. Demery, you see, so we're not... Oh, perhaps... nonsense. I have been planning this celebration for a long time. The chickens are old. <laughs> they, too, have been waiting. <laughs> but we make up for it with the wine, no? We make up for it with the wine, yes. <laughs> yes oh, oh. Bon, bon, bon. We will have one big party. We all become very good friends. Oh, Jane, yeah. why don't you tell him we're not the whole army? It's still... He will be here by the time he wakes up tomorrow. Where's for the fun? Come with me. I get the wine and wake my brother. I hope you're right, baby. I sure hope you're right. <laughs> Wait for me! I'll go with you! I don't want to get lost again! 
I like parties like that. Everybody having a good, clean time, singing songs. It isn't much fun. Everybody enjoying everybody else. Yvonne and Lucille were very good, yes? Yvonne Lucille. The chickens. <laughs> oh, yeah, very good. Is that what you call them, Yvonne Lucille? Mm-hmm. Papa had two great worries about them. He was afraid, first, that they might die from old age before the Americans came. And second? And second, he was afraid your Americans might come on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh easily. That is a good thing. Oh, look. Where? It seems so strange to see lights on in Saint Antoine. It is our town, and it has been so dark for so long. Yeah. Hey, there seems to be a lot of activity down there, doesn't it? Yes, I don't know what it could be. Unless... That's it. The Germans are moving out. They must be pulling back all along the line. They are. Oh, Blake, they are leaving. Vive l'Amérique. I'm so happy. I, I think I could kiss the first American soldier. I... I... <laughs> I think I almost joined the Navy. Oh, but Blake, I, I know you for only such a short time. So short a time? I, I don't think you're so happy. I don't think you're happy at all. Oh, but I am. You are not. I am too happy. Well, you don't show it. All right. There. You see? Well, not too well. Uh, you better explain it again. Oh, Blake, I, I think we go home. Yes? All right, but... You know, I don't think I've ever been so glad just to be an American. to get excited, a rooster. A rooster? You know, a he chicken. <sighs> Holy cow, it's daylight already. Hey, we gotta get that gun police up and get back to the lines. <sighs> Shh. You wanna wake up the whole house? Well, sorry, yeah. I was just gonna say the big weep ought to be good and dry by now. Hey, Benny, come on, you grab the barrel, I'll get it out the other end and we'll pull it away from the fire. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir, but there ain't a bit of moisture left on that thing. Come on. <laughs> Oh, kind of hot, huh, fella? Boy, that was the stupidest thing I ever saw. <laughs> Were you and him? How would you like a poke in the nose, big boy? I'd like it fine. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, Janine, no. Well, nothing's wrong, Miss Emery. Well, I'm sorry, Hank. <clears throat> okay, kid, you got a handkerchief? Yeah. Gee, you're bleeding. Yeah. Well, Henri? Uh, it's nothing. It's only a scratch. Uh, so. I'll wet it at the pump. Bleak. What have you done to your poor hands? Oh, Ben and I tried to pick up the machine gun. It was a little hot, that's all. Oh, gee, let me see, Sarge. God, yeah. that looks like a bad burn. Let me get my aid kit. Yeah. Uh, anybody remember me? I'm the guy with a cut lip. Golly, Sarge. I will fix it for you. Here, put some of this stuff on, Miss Demery. It, it takes the soreness out. This will hurt a little, mon chéri. <laughs> hey, hey, Sarge! Sarge, they're coming in. I can see them off in the woods. Tanks and everything. I tell you, they're coming in. Who's coming in? What are you talking about? The whole booming line. Us. We. The United States Army. Oh, yeah. You see? I tell you. Listen, honey, you got any old rags, grease? Old rags? Yeah, we got to clean up a machine gun. Well, they're liable to kick us right out of the army. Or what's worse, promote us. Oh, no. Yeah, getting lost is bad enough, but getting caught with a rusty suit. Uh, it's, it's no use. They'll be here in a matter of minutes. Hey. I bet if we took it out and fired it where nobody could see us, we could shake most of that stuff off. Yeah. If we could run it continuous firing, maybe we could even get it hot enough to burn off the rust. All right, come on. Now, look, we'll set it up on the other side of the hill. we got nothing to lose but ammo. <laughs> Very exciting. Look over there in that road. See through the trees? The road leading us out of San Anton? Where? I don't see anything. Brother. The bush. There yeah. are still some left. Doesn't that look like a good target? I'll bet you that's the last enemy caravan to pull out. Shall I pour it on them? Oh, no, please. Wait till they have left the village. Hmm. Won't have long to wait. There pretty, they go. Pretty long range. Now, Sarge, now? Are they far enough? I'll get you in. I think so. Remember, Benny, aim high to compensate for the distance. I got you. Okay, Benny, pour it on. Keep it up. We got two more cans. You got one. Just stop running the trucks. I did? I really did already? Come on, come on. 
Remember, keep it up, boy. Now try for that command card. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm higher, Ben. Higher. Hey, look, he's going all over the road. You stop him. Now the truck. There's no stopping me now. What happened? I don't know. Just stopped working. Maybe it jammed. Uh, Open a breach. Yeah. Let's take a look. Yeah, it oh, looks kind of poopy, don't it? Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, the better. blasted rotten luck. It's frozen solid. Oh, what's wrong with it? Oh, brother. Come on. Give me a hand okay, here. here. Uh-oh, yeah. Sergeant. Well, I think we got company. Yeah, but... Jeep with three stars on it. Uh-huh. What is it, Blake? We're caught. It's a general. Who's in charge here? I am, sir. Sergeant Blake Legless, sir. Aren't you a little ahead of the rest, Sergeant? Yes, sir. What's the matter with your hands? Oh, it's nothing, sir. Don't tell me it's nothing when I can see it's something. What's the matter with your hands, Sergeant? I burned them, sir. On the weapon? Lieutenant, inspect that weapon. Yes, sir. And you, Corporal, what happened to your lip? Uh, well, it's like this, Your Honor. I mean, General, sir. Ah, hand-to-hand combat, eh? Uh, well, yes, sir, you might say so, sir. They are very brave and good men, Monsieur General. I'm sure they are, young lady. How long have you been here, Sergeant? Uh, since last night, sir. The weapon is completely burned up, sir. I'd say from the look of it, it's seen almost continuous action. We expected heavy fighting here at Saint Antoine. Do you happen to know why we didn't get it, Sergeant? Yes, sir. The enemy's pulled out, sir. You got here last night? Yes, sir. And when did the enemy start to withdraw? Well, last night, sir. But you see, this had nothing to... Remarkable. Huh? One machine gun crew. Sergeant Blake. They are very brave men, Monsieur General. Indeed they are, young lady. Lieutenant, drive these men back to the aid station immediately. Yes, sir. But uh, what about you, sir? I'll walk back. Oh, no. I'm going to get a first-hand account of this action from this young lady. It will be a pleasure, Monsieur General. Come along, men. Give you a hand inside. Uh, just a minute, Hank. I mean, Corporal. Say, sir, may I have a word with the young lady? Be- <laughs> <laughs> of course, Sergeant. I understand these things. <laughs> yeah. Say, look, honey, I... I just want... Uh... Yes, Blake? Well, look, I mean... Look, we've known each other a pretty short time. I know that, but... Well... Ah, uh, come here. Is that what you wanted to say? Yeah, only louder. Coming, Sergeant? Oh, shut up, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. And about the general, honey, I don't want... I will only tell him the truth. That's all I can do. The truth? Well, okay, I'll... I'll be back, honey, even if it takes me ten years of hard labor. Sergeant Blake R. Legler, Corporal Harry Castellucci, and Privates First Class Benjamin Toole and William Arvin Miller. And for services above and beyond the call of duty for extreme valor in battle... And for selfless actions, they... The French government, as an expression of gratitude to Sergeant Blake R. Legner, Corporal Henri Castellucci, and First Class Privates Benjamin Toul and uh, William Harvey Miller, for their brave action and the liberation of the city of Saint-Antoine, is pleased... <laughs> Of course, we all kept telling them we didn't deserve all the honor and the medals, but all we'd hear was nonsense. You boys are just being modest. Hello. Oh, sure. Send it back, please. And see what you mean about writing it as fiction. Might be a little embarrassing if everybody had to turn in all those medals. No, that's not exactly it. You see, Ben, it just sounds phony. It sounds like something a newsman just dreamed up to make copy. Sounds like something with the dreamers of this business, the ones we call the nature figures. Oh, I don't know. I believe it. <laughs> oh, hi, baby. About ready to go, dear? Yeah. Say, Jim, I, I don't think you've ever met my wife, have you? No, I never have. How do you do, Miss Legler? Jim Hardman, my wife. Janine Legler. So nice to meet you, Jim. <laughs> you still believe it, Jim? Well, maybe you better write it as fiction, Blake. Yep, you better write it as fiction. <laughs> Come on, honey, let's go home. <laughs> This 
This is Gene Raymond again. The chances are you begin the day by reading the morning paper. And much as you reach for the news, if you're like nearly everyone else, you often wish you hadn't heard the latest. Science is expanding the university, the universe of physical knowledge to terrifying proportions. At four or five global points, war can and may explode momentarily. Tragic, bewildered thousands are displaced from their homes. Prices appear to be rising to astronomical zones. The polio season will be over, and the pneumonia season will take its place. And there's the chart. The chart telling you what to do if an atom bomb makes your city a target. Are you safe and sound any place at all? Most of us keep reading and wondering and worrying. If you're past 50, you're nostalgic for the old days of peace, plenty, and certainty, but you may even wonder if such a time actually did exist. If you're young and healthy, you may see the panorama of your far horizon blurred by near hazards. How does a thoughtful person keep his poise? By escapist distractions from too much thinking? Perhaps. By building a philosophy? Perhaps. Only one thing is certain as has been proved by those who understand, or who are beginning to understand, the providence of God. They know that it must be God's will that they live in the exact age into which they're born. While we were given life without asking for it, we'll be given the courage to meet life only by asking for it. Just as it's weak to evade reality, it's strong to meet it, meet it head on. And God must truly love those who meet it squarely. It's the poise to understand that every age has its own hazards. That what you might have died of in an earlier age, you are now saved from by a new medicine, born of normal research to research to research to meet the emergency of war. There is an equalization. The poised know that. And they know the seed of poise is true and stalwart faith. Faith that humbly unites in prayer with God. This faith and the prayer keeps families together, keeps the nation safe, for the nation is safe when its families are rugged and solid. Remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Family Theater has brought you Mademoiselle from San Antoine, starring James Whitmore. Gene Raymond was your host. Others in the cast were Ted DeCorsia, Gladys Holland, Frank Gerstel, Tom Holland, Jack Cushion, Herbert Litton, and Howard Culver. The script was written by Robert U. O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which responds to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Charles Arlington expressing the wish of family theater that the blessings of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at the same time when Family Theater will present Gene Lockhart and Scotty Beckett in The Funny Man. Join us, won't you? This is the world's largest network, serving more than 500 radio stations and mutual broadcasting systems.